डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माय टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन एनाटॉमी ऑफ द पेनक्रियाज नाउ एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वन फिगर आई एम शोइंग यू एंड इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर एज यू कैन सी देर आर टोटल एट थियरी पॉइंट्स एंड दिस एट थियरी पॉइंट्स आर कवर्ड इन दिस फिगर ओनली so what i am trying to tell you that if you prepare this figure then with the help of this figure you can prepare the entire topic that is the anatomy of the pancreas now we are starting this presentation lecture first in this figure the stomach is not shown so let me draw this stomach as well so i am drawing the rough diagram so this is the stomach and now we have studied the process of digestion in the stomach and after the digestion <coughs> in the stomach the digested food is known as the chyme and this kind enters into the small intestine and the initial part of the small intestine we know that is known as the duodenum so duodenum receives the chyme from the stomach now on this chyme <coughs> there are some secretion are going to work in the duodenum let's say the pancreas so now we need to study the histology of the pancreas which are the cell that <coughs> produce the pancreatic juice and how this pancreatic juice is poured into duodenum then we know the cells of the liver okay and what is the role of the gall bladder so that role we should be knowing and this liver cell we know they produce the bile so the bile is also secreted in the duodenum so now the chyme chyme is acted upon by the bile and the pancreatic juices okay and which are the enzyme that are present in the pancreatic juice or the bile so that we need to study now so in this series this is the first lecture <coughs> so and these are the accessory <coughs> digestive organ the pancreas and the <coughs> liver because the secretion of this accessory organ they are playing playing a very vital role in the process of digestion in the small intestine that is the duodenum so now we are starting this presentation lecture these are all very important figure once i deliver the lecture i will show you all the figure so you can go through all the figures now this is the second point of our discussion the pancreas pen means all and creas means flush uh, pancreas is the retro <coughs> peritoneal gland retro peritoneal means it is situated inferior to the peritoneum or behind the peritoneum the pancreas is situated in our body now the length of the pancreas so this is the this this is the length so it is 12 to 15 centimeter long that is 5 to 6 inch long and the thickness of pancreas and having a thickness of 2.5 centimeter and where it is present so lies posterior to the greater curvature of the stomach 
So here in this figure, as you can see, the stomach is uplifted. And this is the, right now I am showing you, this one is the greater curvature of the stomach. So you can understand the position since they are showing the uplifted stomach. So now when the stomach is uplifted, just posterior to that, the pancreas is situated. <coughs> so this is in this point they have discussed about the length <coughs> and thickness of the pancreas and where in the body the pancreas is present. Now moving on the third point of our discussion. Now this is the third point of our discussion the pancreas the entire pancreas is divided into head then head is followed by neck for example this is the entire pancreas so we can divide this pancreas into four main region this one is the head then this one is the neck part then we are having the body and the final tapering end, the narrow end, that is the tail. So the pancreas is divided into head, neck, body and tail. Now where the head is present? So first of all, head is the expanded portion of the pancreas and it is present near the curve of the duodenum. So here in the figure, this is the duodenum, the C-shaped organ and this close to this duodenum, the head is present. Then head is followed by neck, neck is followed by body and final tapering end is known as the tail. So this is the third point of our discussion. <laughs> now fourth point <coughs> excuse me now now here in the fourth point you can go through this point you can read this point I am directly explaining this point what they are trying to explain us that this is the this is the pancreas and I I am showing you now the cross section so this is the cross section of the pancreas and 99% of the pancreas is having this exocrine acini now these are the exocrine acini this one and this one and this one this one so 99% of pancreas are having the exocrine acini and this cell of this acini this epithelial cell they secrete the pancreatic juice okay and this is the duct you can understand this is the cross section so this acini they are forming the duct system and this small duct they join together and they open into large duct so that large duct is known as the pancreatic duct so the acinar duct open into the pancreatic duct and in the 1% of the pancreas, the islet of Langerhans are present and this islet of Langerhans is an endocrine part and in that various kind of endocrine cell are present. For example, the alpha cell, the beta cell, the delta cell, the F cell and this cell, they secrete various kind of hormones. But in this lecture, we are not going to discuss the endocrine part of the pancreas. 
we are just studying the duct system of the pancreas so the acini over here in this again this is the histological slide they are showing so you can see this pancreatic acinis are shown these are pancreatic acini and in the red color this part is the pancreatic islet and this are the excretory acini these are the excretory acini which is surrounded by the acinal cell so the <coughs> this excretory acini the duct of the excretory acini they join to get together then they are forming the duct system and this small duct ultimately this small duct they open into the large or the main pancreatic duct so the excretory acinal cell they are producing the pancreatic juice and that juice is traveled by the small duct and this small duct they open into the large pancreatic duct okay so in the fourth point they are discussing the pancreatic duct system so we are this is the this is the point they are writing now okay how the pancreatic juice is secreted and how this pancreatic juice is poured into the small intestine okay so there are two duct one is this duct this duct is known as the pancreatic duct or the duct of wilson okay so in this point okay this point fifth point duct of wilson okay or the pancreatic duct so over here this is the this duct is the pancreatic duct okay now if you observe this pancreatic duct what is happening this is the this is the liver this one is the right lobe of liver and this is the right hepatic duct so this is the right hepatic duct and this is the left lobe of liver this is left hepatic duct so left and right hepatic duct they, they join together and they are forming common hepatic duct now this is the gall bladder now from gall bladder one duct is emerging out this duct is known as the cystic duct cystic duct is joining the common hepatic duct so now the one duct that is formed that is known as the common bile duct okay and in this common bile duct this pancreatic duct is opening okay so now one small duct which is in the form of ampulla is formed so this duct this ampulla is formed by the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct and this ampulla this ampulla is known as the hepatopancreatic ampulla or the ampulla of vata okay so and here 
with this small <coughs> concept map you can get the idea that the right hepatic duct joins with left hepatic duct and forms the common hepatic duct from liver into common hepatic duct the cystic duct from global bladder is opening so then there is a formation of common bile duct and in this common bile duct the pancreatic duct is opening so the small bulge like ampulla is formed and this ampulla is opening into the duodenum and this ampulla is known as the hepatopancreatic ampulla or the ampulla of a water so in this point the pancreatic duct or the duct of Wilson then this duct join the common bile duct okay and then there is a formation of the hepatopancreatic ampulla and this hepatic pancreatic ampulla is opening into the duodenum now here this part this reddish brown color portion you can understand this is the duodenum okay and this part is the mucosa of the duodenum this part now this is this is the ampulla hepatopancreatic ampulla and the point at which the ampulla is opening so where this ampulla is opening so this ampulla is opening into the elevated part on the mucosa and the elevation or the elevated part of the mucosa this part where the ampulla is opening this part is known as the major duodenal papilla so the major duodenal papilla of duodenal mucosa is the elevated part where the ampulla is opening okay and the this opening is present 10 centimeter inferior to the pyloric pincher of the stomach so away 10 centimeter away from the pyloric pincher the ampulla is opening into the duodenum that is the meaning of this thing okay this is the theory point and you can go through this figure so you will get the idea okay <coughs> now this ampulla in the seventh point they are mentioning this pincher now this ampulla we know ampulla is going to pour the pancreatic juice into the duodenum and this ampulla is guarded by the spincher so this is the spincher and this spincher is made up of smooth muscle and the name of this spincher is the spincher <coughs> of ODA or the spincher of the hepatopancreatic ampulla So this pincher is actually the guarding <coughs> the secretion of pancreatic juice. So when the pincher is open, when the pincher smooth muscle of the pincher they are relaxed. So this duct, this ampulla will pour the pancreatic juice. Okay. <coughs> so this pincher. Is known as the hepatopancreatic <coughs> spincher, the spincher of the hepatopancreatic ampulla or the spincher of the OD. And now one more duct is there. For example, in this point, this is the eighth point, and here they are mentioning the accessory duct see this is the this one is the main duct of the pancreas 
and from this main duct one small branch is arising so this small branch which arises from the main pancreatic duct is known as the accessory duct or the duct of santorini okay and where this duct is opening so the duct accessory duct empties into the it is opening into the duodenum and this opening the opening this opening of the duct of santorini or the accessory duct this opening and this opening so this is the opening of hepatopancreatic ampulla and the distance between this two opening is 2.5 cm so the accessory duct is opening superiorly to the hepatopancreatic ampulla and the distance is 2.5 cm between this two opening okay so these are all the theory points so i have explained you all the theory point and you need to go through the figure so that you can understand all the theory point properly so before i wind up this presentation lecture i would like to show you all the figures so you go through all the figures So you will get the idea where exactly the pancreas is situated in our body and which are the duct and how the duct are opening into the duodenum. So with this we have completed this presentation lecture on anatomy of the pancreas. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and I also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and in your studies. My name is Manish Kushti sir. I am from Ahmedabad, India. Bye bye. Namaste.